Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm not seeing, or if I didn't see who came online, my apologies, but if you're here, I'm really happy you're here and good morning. Um, again, thank you for joining me on this live practice, live uh, broadcast, and as well um, as thank you for, um, um, for checking me out and checking other teachers out. Just a little bit about myself and uh, this program that we're doing here. It's a combination of the work with the Plank uh, Studio app as well as omstars.com. I have been a member of OMSTARS for uh, almost a couple of years now, I want to say. And there have been amazing, um, just amazing group of people, amazing teachers. And if you haven't checked out OMSTARS, please uh, do so as soon as you can. And I also, I do have an entire course, six class course um, that is on demand videos at OMSTAR. So you get to practice with me there too as well. Um, if you, this is your first time joining us, I usually like to practice with some props, two blocks um, and a blanket. That's what we're gonna use today. We're gonna use two blocks and a blanket. If you don't have blocks, I'll offer some modifications to what you can do without blocks a uh, blanket any blanket would do it does not have to be a yoga blanket even like a, a bath towel or a beach towel would uh, would do the trick too as well so it's just something that sometimes we use as a cushion to sit on or to pat our knees when we put our knees onto the ground for example yeah so i'm excited about today's practice where uh, the practice for monday mornings is just a general easy nice flow to get us to energize ourselves and start our week off on a good note and that usually ranges from um, any kind of yoga practice um, and today we're going to be focused a little bit more on uh, heart openers and back bends so hopefully you all will get to enjoy that Okay, so two blocks, a blanket. I'm gonna back up so all you can see me practice and we'll start together. So as I mentioned, two blocks and a blanket. You're gonna take, actually set your blanket to the side for now. We're just gonna start actually laying onto the ground. So I'm gonna lay onto my belly. This is a really nice stretch to start the morning with. I'm going to take my right arm in an L shape. Okay, some yoga teachers love to call that cactus shape, referencing to the Seguro cactus of Arizona. So L shape or cactus shape, whatever suits your heart. And then after I put my right elbow level with my right shoulder, I'm going to crawl my right fingertips forward a little bit. That way my elbow is now ahead of my shoulder, but my elbow is still bent, as you see. I did not straighten my arms. That's not what I'm after. Keep the elbow bent just slightly ahead of the shoulder. And then I'm gonna to look to the left side and I'm gonna, with my left hand, push and roll towards my right. I'm not asking you to come completely on the right side. This takes the stretch away. I want you to stay onto your belly and just roll towards your right side. I'm keeping my head onto the ground. As you can see, I can do whatever I want with this top leg, you can keep it up. In line with the other, you can take it a little bit backwards, whatever is more comfortable for you. The stretch here will be mainly in the front of the right shoulder and the right side of this, the chest. Just a few more breaths here. Let's take three more cycles of breath. slowly come towards your belly. We're going to do the same thing on to the other side. I'm going to take my left arm in that L shape, crawl my left fingers forward a little bit to land my left elbow a little ahead of my left shoulder. I'm going to look to the right. Watch here. My head stays on the ground. I'm not lifting my head. I'm just rolling towards my left. Even if it's a little bit, even if I don't go all the way to the left side, that's perfectly okay should feel just a stretch in the front of the left shoulder, maybe even the upper left arm or the left chest, depending on the person. A few cycles of breath here.
And then slowly come back to your belly again. This time bring your hands by your ribs. We're going to take the hands wider than the mat. And as you see, I'm tinting up onto my fingertips. Hands or wrists right underneath the elbows. I'm just going to roll myself up into a cobra. Letting my head be heavy. Bringing my head up last thing. And then as I exhale, I'm gonna crawl my belly and heart forward and roll all the way down. So it's like a little undulating motion, leading with the shoulders, the chest, lift up into a cobra. Exhale, cartwheel, or rather, roll the belly forward and down. And again, move like that. Inhale, shoulders, chest up, head come up last. Exhale, lower all the way down. Three more cycles of breath. Inhale to lift up. Exhale to lower down, inhale to lift up, exhale to lower down, one more time, inhale to lift up, exhale to lower down. And then bring your hands underneath your shoulders, and once your hands land underneath your shoulders, move them back next to your low ribs. So at the same thing, wrists right underneath the elbows, and as you can see, my forearms are perpendicular to the ground. Now for a mini cobra, or sometimes called a baby cobra, first lift your right leg up, stretch it as far back as you can, put the right foot onto the ground, lift the left leg up, stretch it as far back as you can, make it equal to the right and put it back onto the ground. I'm gonna push into the ground with the tops of my feet to turn my legs on. So the legs gotta be nice and strong in cobra. They can't be just lazy because they're on the ground. And you can't see it here, but I'm also drawing my belly inwards a little bit to protect my back. With my hands by my ribs this time, little weight into the hands. I'm gonna lift the shoulders, chest, then head up into a cobra, any size. Rather than pushing into the hands, hands are just there for support, and I'm working with the muscles of the upper back. A few more cycles of breath here. Bhujangasana, cobra pose. Legs strong, belly in, chest forward. And then slowly lower all the way down. This time bring your hands underneath your shoulders and come onto your hands and knees. And then come into a downward facing dog and just kind of move around as you like for a few breaths. And first downward facing dog I do every morning. I just love to start to doing it like that instead of getting into the shape right away just move around sway the hips bend the knee and then the other maybe lift a leg and then the other just do whatever your heart intends Take three more cycles of breath to move around like that. And then slowly bring your knees to the mat. Take your blanket and put it around where your knees landed. So Imagine you're doing a low lunge where your back knee would be. The blanket is just for a cushion because we'll spend some time in the lunge position and come back to downward facing dog. Okay, now in this downward facing dog, take your feet at least as wide as your hips, maybe even as wide as your hands, or it can also be as wide as the mat. The wider the legs, the easier it is, is going to be, or the wider it will become in the low back and the sacrum area as well. Lift the front of the toes up first, and then lift the heels up to lift the hips up. Turn the biceps upwards as you push the arms into the ground. Three breaths here. Fire the front of the legs, the front thigh muscles. 
take the hips up and back. Then inhale your right leg up. Exhale, step it forward. I'm gonna put my back knee down onto the blanket. Then we're just gonna do a quad stretch. I'm gonna give you a couple of options. Option one is upright yourself. Grab the back of the leg and hold it like that. If that doesn't work for you, you can put your left hand down. And this time with the opposite arm, with the right leg, or right hand rather, you're gonna grab the left leg. Just stay here for a few cycles of breath. slowly release that back leg. This time you're going to tuck your back toes under. This helps open the soles of the feet so that my back toes are tucked under. And let me actually get the blocks out of the way. Hopefully you guys will see me. We'll come to the blocks later. One more time. My back toes are tucked under. I'm going to sit onto my back heel as much as I can. If you can't sit all the way down, you can stay in the kind of like a runner's lunge with the back toes tucked under and just stretch the front leg. Then bend your front knee, step back into a downward facing dog. Same thing, other side. Inhale the left leg up. Exhale, step it forward. Put the back knee down onto the ground. Choices, upright yourself. Bend the back leg, catch the back foot for a quad stretch. Or put the right hand down. And then with the left hand, Catch the right foot for a quad stretch. Same thing you did on to the other side. A few cycles of breath. your back foot, tuck your back toes under, straighten your front leg, sit towards the back heel as much as you can. Again, you can stay a little bit more upright and stretch the front leg or you can sit all the way to your heel, whatever it works for you. forward. This time we're going to step all the way forward into a forward fold. I'm going to bend my knees, get the weight into my legs, and just slowly round myself all the way up to standing. I'm going to take the blanket and set it to the side. And we'll start with our first flow, some few rounds of sun salutation, Ayo Surya Namaskar A, just to get the blood flowing and get us nice and warmed up. Inhale, reach your arms up. Exhale, fold over your legs. Half lift, inhale. Hands to the mat, step back to plank pose. I'm gonna modify it today, lower all the way to your belly. Inhale, mini cobra like we did at the very beginning. Exhale, downward facing dog. We'll stay here for five cycles of breath. One. Three. Four. Five. Inhale, bend your knees, look forward. Exhale, step or hop forward. Half lift, inhale, flat back. 
Exhale, fold. Inhale, arms out or forward and up. Exhale, hands by your side. Again, together, inhale the arms up. Exhale, fold over your legs. Half lift, flat back, inhale. Hands to the mat, step back to plank. I'm still gonna modify it. Lower all the way to your belly. Mini cobra, breathe in. Downward facing dog, breathe out. Five breaths. Three. Four. Five. Bend your knees, look between your hands, step or hop forward. Half lift, inhale. Exhale, fold. Inhale, arms out or forward and up. Exhale, hands by your side. One more time, this modified way. Inhale, the arms up. Exhale, fold over your legs. Half lift, inhale. Hands to the mat, step back to plank. Exhale, lower to your belly. Inhale, mini cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Once more, five breaths. between your hands, step or hop forward, half lift, inhale, exhale, fold, inhale, arms out and up, exhale, hands by your side. So hopefully that gave us a little bit of a warm up. I want you to grab your one of your blocks. If you don't have a block, don't worry about it, but if you have a block, I want you to grab a block and hold it in between your thighs as high as you can reach it. If you don't have a block, just stand with your feet a little part about inner hips width apart okay so with or without the block I'm gonna put the block on because hopefully most of you do but even if you have it if you don't have it I want you to strengthen your legs lift your toes up that helps you fire these front thigh muscles so grip the front thigh muscles upwards traction the kneecap upwards lift the front of the thighs front of the pelvis here should feel like it's coming upwards energetically. I'm not saying tuck or do anything like that. I just want you to turn your legs on, get your legs super straight. And then inhale the arms up. Urdhva Hastasana, this goes upward hands pose. And that's literally what it means. Reach your hands as far up as you can to extend the entire side of the body. Make the side of the body feel as long as it possibly can. Look forward rather than looking up, but reach through the fingertips. Five cycles of breath here. Just make yourself taller and taller. Two more. And then bring your hands down to your heart center. Set your hands by your side. Now take the block, if you have it, and set it to the side. Actually, let's bring both of our blocks to the front end of the mat because we may use them in the next. Okay. Now stand, you can have your feet together or you can have your feet apart. Even if they're together, imagine there's still a block in between your thighs. So what I want you to do is lift your toes up to turn on those front thigh muscles. Firm the outer hips, the sides of the glutes should be nice and firm. Lift the front of the thighs up, the front of the pelvis up. This time, interlace your hands and reach your arms up. Use the leverage of the knuckle to pull yourself up higher and higher and higher and longer. I'm gonna turn just sideways so you see what I'm gonna do with my arms and my back. I'm gonna keep myself nice and long. I'm not gonna bend here at all. This is gonna stay nice and long. 
I'm gonna reach up, reach up, reach up, firm my thighs, and then I'm gonna slide my arms, just my arms behind my biceps. If that's not happening for you, then stay here. That's perfectly okay. A few breaths here. Slide by my biceps behind my ears, rather. That's what I meant to say. And then slowly bring your hands by your side. Just gonna switch the interlace of the hands, so the less habitual interlace. And we're gonna do the same thing again. Arms up, arms up, no back bend at all. I'm just reaching up, up, up as high as I can. And then with that space that I create in the armpit, I'll slowly start to slide by my, my biceps behind my ears. Two more breaths. And then slowly bring your hands to your heart center. Have your hands by your side. As I mentioned, if you have blocks, have them by the front end of your mat. And also take your blanket and put it back to where your knees, for your knees, if you need cushioning for your knees. And from Tadasana, inhale, reach your arms up, Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, fold over your legs. Half lift, flat back this time. Exhale, hands to the mat. Inhale the left leg back into a lunge. And then reach your arms up high lunge. Take a breath in. Exhale, open up into a warrior two. Pivot the left heel down, right leg forward. Inhale, reverse your warrior. Exhale, extended side angle. That's when the block can come in handy. You can put your hand onto the block or you can take your forearm to the thigh. Take a deep breath here, and then hands to the mat. I'm gonna step back to plank pose. Lower to your belly or chaturanga this time. Cobra or upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Downward facing dog, inhale your right leg up. Exhale, step it forward. Back knee down, inhale, reach your arms up. Open up the front side. Exhale, hands to the mat or the blocks. Straighten both legs, bow over your front thigh. And then bend your front knee and step forward into a forward fold. Half lift, flat back, inhale. Exhale, fold, hands to the hips on the inhale. Come all the way up to standing. Hands by your side. Inhale, the arms up the other side. Exhale, fold over your legs. Half lift, inhale. Hands to the mat, step the right leg back to a lunge. Back knee down. Actually, rather, inhale the arms up, high lunge. So the back knee stays up. Take one more breath in. Exhale, open up into a warrior two. Yes, sometimes we mess up the order a little bit, but that's okay. Inhale, reverse your order, warrior. Not your order, your warrior. Exhale, extended side angle, forearm to the thigh or hand to the block, whichever works best for you. Take a deep breath here, hands to the ground, step back to plank. Last time I showed chaturanga, you can also lower all the way to your belly and do a cobra instead of upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Inhale your right leg up, exhale, step it forward. This time we'll put the back knee down, inhale, reach your arms up. Exhale, hands to the blocks. Straighten the front leg and bow over it. And then bend your front knee and step back into, or step forward into a forward fold. Half lift, inhale. Exhale, fold. Hands to the hips on the inhale, come all the way up to standing. Exhale, hands by your side. Inhale the arms up, we're gonna keep moving. Exhale, fold over your legs. Half lift, inhale. Hands to the mat. Left leg back to a lunge. Inhale the arms up, high lunge. Exhale, warrior two. Inhale, reverse your warrior. 
Exhale, extended side angle. Take a deep breath in, hands to the ground. Step back to plank. Choose chaturanga or lower all the way to your belly. Cobra or upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Inhale the left leg up. Exhale, step it forward. Tap the back knee down. Inhale the arms up. Exhale, hands to the ground. Or the block, straighten both legs. Deep breath in. And exhale, step forward, forward fold. Half lift, inhale. Exhale, fold. Inhale, arms out and up. Exhale, hands by your side. Again, inhale the arms up. Exhale, fold over your legs. Half lift, inhale. Hands to the mat, right leg back to a lunge. High lunge, breathe in. Warrior two, breathe out. Inhale, reverse your warrior. Exhale, extended side angle. Take a deep breath in. Hands to the ground. Step back to plank. Choose chaturanga over your belly. Cobra or upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Inhale your left leg up. Exhale, step it forward. Tap the back knee down. Inhale the arms up. Exhale, hands to the mat. Straighten both legs. Next exhale, bend your front knee and step forward into a forward fold. Half lift, inhale. Exhale, fold. Hands to the hips on the inhale. Come all the way up to standing. Hands by your side. Again, together. Arms up. Inhale. Exhale, fold over your legs. Half lift. Inhale. Hands to the mat. Left leg back to a lunge. High lunge. Breathe in. Warrior two. Breathe out. Reverse your warrior. Inhale. Extended side angle. Exhale. Take a deep breath in. Hands to the ground, step back to plank. Chaturanga or lower to your belly. Cobra or upward facing dog, then downward facing dog. Inhale your right leg up. Exhale, step it forward. Tap the back knee down, inhale the arms up. Exhale, hands to the blocks or the mat, straighten both legs. Deep breath in. Bend your front knee, step forward. Half lift, flat back. Exhale, fold. Hands to the hips on the inhale, come all the way up to standing. Hands by your side. Last time, inhale the arms up. Exhale, fold over your lip. Half lift, inhale. Hands to the mat, step your right leg back. High lunge, inhale. Warrior two, exhale. Reverse your warrior breathing. Extended side angle, breathe out. Take a deep breath in, hands to the mat. Step back to plank. Choose belly or chaturanga. Cobra or upward facing dog, downward facing dog. Inhale the left leg up. Exhale, step it forward. Tap the back knee down. Inhale, reach your arms up. Exhale, hands to the blocks or the mat, straighten both legs. Take a deep breath in, bend your front knee, step forward into a forward fold. Half lift, inhale. Exhale, fold, inhale, arms out and up. Exhale, hands by your side. Tadasana. As you are, after this movement, we did a lot of work with the legs. Stand strong into your legs, lengthen the front of the thighs upwards, draw the front of the pelvis upwards without necessarily tucking. So I'm not asking to tuck, I'm just asking you to have super straight legs underneath you. And then everything else will come in line. Notice the impact of that little bit of movement, that little bit of leg work that we did on your stance versus how we did it a few minutes ago. Release 
your Tadasana, take your blanket, set it off of your mat for now. And as I mentioned before, when I'm facing the camera or I'm facing you, I'm going to be mirroring you. So I'm going to be doing opposite of what I'm saying. So try to kind of follow as I say and, and look at me for an example. It'll be a lot easier than trying to do it the other way. Okay. I'm going to stand with the hands to the hips, feet together. Find that same sense of Tadasana that we were just in. And I'm going to come into a tree pose. For tree pose, I'm going to give you some variations. We're going to start by standing into the right leg and we're going to bend the left leg. First options, tripod tree pose. That challenges our balance and gets us to work on opening the hips. Second option, foot to the calf. Third option, foot to the inner thigh. What I would like to avoid is foot to the knee. Try not to put your foot onto your knee. Now fix your gaze at one point in front of you. That will be your drishti, your focus. Turn on that right thigh muscle up to help you bring that outer right hip in. And then squeeze the left buttocks to open up the inner left thigh. Hands can be at heart center. You can also hook your right thumb behind your left and you can reach your arms up. Extend upwards like we did in Ervahasasana. Five cycles of breath here. Three more. And then slowly release your hands, bring the knee into the midline, release the legs. You can shake your legs a little bit before we switch sides. You're going to stand on to your left leg. Notice this side may be different. So this side you may want to do one of these variations as well. It does not have to be the same as the other side. Ooh. See, it's important to fix your point or you fix your gaze at a still point on the wall in front of you. The reason I lost my balance is because I was actually trying to look at myself in the camera and my movement got me to mess up my balance. So just be aware of that. Turn the front of the right thigh muscle on, or the left thigh muscle rather. Turn the front of the left thigh muscle on. Pull up on that front of the left thigh muscle. Hug the outer left hip in towards the middle. Squeeze the right buttocks. And again, like we did on the other side, you can hook the left thumb behind the right and reach your arms up. Five breaths. Tree pose, Brikshasana. Two more. Even if balance is challenging. Then bring your hands to heart center, draw the knee in, and shake your legs. Okay. You can turn and face sideways, but you can face in any direction you want. I just want to show you the side view as we come into this next pose. Very similar to what we did before. You're going to interlace your hands and reach your arms up into that modified Urba Hastasana or upward hands pose. Use the leverage of the knuckles to lift yourself upwards. Turn the front of the thighs on so much that you feel your glutes also get nice and firm. And then pull up, pull up through the knuckles. Slide the biceps behind the ears if you can. Just look up without throwing your head up or the th without throwing your head back. And then push into the feet, push into the heels to go up and go back. Draw the low belly in, then go up and go back. Go up and go back. Go up and go back into a standing back bend. Couple more breaths here. Inhale to go up, exhale, go back. Inhale, go up, exhale, draw the belly in and go back. And then come back to the middle. Hands to heart center. We'll do the same thing with the opposite switch of the hands. I'm just turning the other way so you can see the other side of me. That's all it is. Just the, what I'm trying to point is, we're not hinging into the low back at all. It doesn't matter how far back I go, the bend should come from the thoracic, the middle or upper back. 
Switch to interlace with the hands. Reach your arms up. Reach up. Take the knuckles upwards. Go up to slide the biceps behind the ears. Then look up. Push into the heels and start to go up to go back. Go up to go back. And as you can see, I'm keeping my pelvis above my heels. It doesn't matter how deep I go, but go up to go back. Couple more breaths. And come back to the middle. Hands to heart center. Release your hands by your side. Back to movement with the breath. Sun salutation B, Surya Namaskar B. On the breath in, hips slow, arms up, chair pose. Exhale, fold over your legs. Half lift, inhale. Hands to the mat, step back to plank. Lower to your belly or chaturanga, cobra or upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Inhale the right leg up. Exhale, step it next to the right thumb. Pivot the left heel down. Inhale the arms up, warrior one. Exhale, hands to the ground. Step back to plank. Choose belly, chaturanga, cobra or upward facing dog, downward facing dog. Left leg up, inhale. Step it next to the left thumb. Pivot the right heel down. Inhale the arms up, warrior one. Exhale, hands to the mat. Step back. Choose belly or chaturanga. Cobra or upward facing dog, downward facing dog. Five breaths. I would like to share with you that I keep switching my vinyasa flow. I go to the belly and I go to chaturanga just to show you that it is okay to do either or. You don't have to switch. You don't have to alternate like I'm doing. I'm just offering options. You can pick one and stick with it and that's perfectly okay. And you can also switch halfway if you wanna switch. One more cycle of breath. And then bend your knees, look between your hands, step or hop forward, half lift, inhale. Exhale, fold, hips low, arms up, chair pose, breathe in. Exhale, hands by your side. Again, together. Hips low, arms up, chair pose. Exhale, fold over your legs. Half lift, inhale. Hands to the mat. Step back to plank. Lower to your belly or chaturanga. Cobra or upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Inhale the right leg up. Exhale, step it forward. Back heel down. Inhale the arms up, warrior one. Exhale, hands to the ground. Step back. Choose chaturanga or your belly. Cobra or upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Inhale the left leg up. Exhale, step it forward. Back heel down, inhale the arms up, warrior one. Exhale, hands to the mat. Step back to plank. Choose belly or chaturanga. Cobra or upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Five breaths. Two more. Bend your knees, look between your hands, step or hop forward. Half lift, inhale. Exhale, fold. Hips slow, arms up, chair pose, breathe in. Exhale, stand straight up. One more time, hips slow, arms up, chair pose. Exhale, fold. Half lift, inhale. Hands to the mat, step back to plank. Lower to your belly or chaturanga. Cobra or upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Right leg up, breathe in. Exhale, step it forward. Back heel down, inhale the arms up, warrior one. Exhale, hands to the mat. Step back, choose chaturanga, belly. Cobra, upward facing dog. 
downward facing dog. Left leg up. Exhale, step it next to the left thumb. Back heel down. Inhale the arms up for your one. Exhale, hands to the mat. Step back. Lower belly or chaturanga. Cobra or upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Five breaths. time, inhale your right leg up, exhale, bend the knee for pigeon pose. Pigeon, if this hurts your knees, or your hips, or you're just super tight, a really nice modification to it is you come to laying onto your back, cross your right foot over your left thigh in a figure four shape, grab the back of the left thigh and pull it towards your chest. That's still, still going to give you a nice chest stretch here. You can also take a blanket, fold it up, or a block, perhaps, and put that underneath your hip, like I'm doing now. Okay, that will be another option, a blanket or a block, either or. I like to take the block and put it underneath my chest, it just helps me that. And then we'll be here for, for a little bit, for about a minute long. Take three more cycles of breath. Then you slowly make your way out of the side. You can switch right away. I usually like to go back to downward facing dog and just kind of like sway my hips a little bit. Some people like to lift that leg up and open up the hip. You don't have to do any or all of these. I'm just offering, again, options to switch. And when you're ready, you'll take the left leg forward for pigeon. If pigeon hurts you on this side, come to lean onto your back again and do that figure four stretch that I showed a little bit ago. Otherwise, support yourself in pigeon in any way that you can or like and be in pigeon on the left side.
Take three more cycles of breath on this side as well. Slowly make your way out of pigeon on this side. And do the same counter stretch you did on the other side if you did one. If not, just uh, come onto your hands and knees or you can come into a child's pose. And then eventually we will all meet laying onto the belly. So you're gonna come and lay down onto your belly. Then you're going to take your hands by your side, lift your left, right leg up, reach it as far back as you can, like we did at the very beginning, put it onto the ground, lift your left leg up, reach it equal to the right, put it next to the right. Have your feet, the feet can be hips width apart or they can be all the way together. Um, and then bring your hands and interlace your hands behind your back. Forehead to the mat. So avoid leaning with the head. Keep the forehead as heavy as we can, reach your knuckles back, and then lift the outer shoulders up, lift the chest up, lift the thighs up, keep the legs straight. Yes, the head will come up, but I'm not throwing my head back either. I'm looking forward and lengthening my spine. Shalabhasana, locust pose. We'll be here for a couple more breaths. And then slowly lower all the way down. And the windshield wiper the hips to the left and to the right. Okay, I'm gonna do that one more time. Interlace, opposite interlace of the fingers, hands behind the back, lengthen the legs, sharpen the legs, lift the legs up, lift the chest up, lift the head up, go as far back as with your knuckles as you can, but take the chest forward. Three breaths. And then slowly lower. Again, sway the hips side to side, look the opposite way. And then bring your hands underneath your shoulders. Lift your hips up into a child's pose. And then we'll come on to your hands and knees. We're gonna use the blanket one more time. This time I want you to take the blanket and or the towel and unfold it in a way that when you kneel on it, and as you can see, when I'm kneeling on my blanket, my entire leg from toes to knees are onto the blanket. I'm gonna take my block, I'm just gonna put it between my heels and take a seat in Virasana, here, or supported Virasana rather, here as pose. Push evenly with the outer and the inner shin bones. Lift the pubic bone upward, the low belly upward. Three more breaths, just like that. Then you're gonna to come to stand onto your shin bones, and I want you to take both of your blocks and you're gonna put them right next to your shin bones. Right next to your ankles, rather. And then bring your hands to your hips. Push the shin bones into the blanket or into the ground to turn on that front thigh muscle. Slide your thumbs to the very top of the buttocks. Lengthen the tailbone down towards the heels or down towards the knees. 
lift the front of the pelvis up. It's all the work that we've been doing in practice when we're standing. Draw that low belly, that pubic bone upwards. Okay? And then bring your gaze up. Keep the sides of the body super long and then go up to go back. In this first one, we're doing camel pose, obviously. In this first one, I'm gonna keep my hands onto my top of the buttocks or my hips, but I'm gonna go up to go back. Go up to go back. Go up to go back. As you see, I'm not throwing my head all the way back and straining my, thro my throat, rather keeping the back of the neck long. And you can even tell the difference in my voice. Here, my throat is open, but I'm going back. Here, my throat is strained and the voice changes because I'm throwing my head too far back. That's not okay. And then come back to the middle and take one of those blocks put it between your heels and sit on it again. Those blocks are gonna come in handy in this next one. And then come standing onto your shin bones one more time. Take the blocks next to your ankles as we had them. And the same thing again. Hands to the out, top of the buttocks flesh. I'm guiding the top of the buttocks flesh down and I'm turning on the front of the thighs. And then I'm gonna go up to go back, go up to go back. Back of the neck stays long. I'm working with the shoulders, go up to go back. Options, stay here. You don't have to get your hands off of your hips. You know your own body better than I do. Second option is take your hands to the blocks. Rest your hands onto the blocks. Third option, Take your hands to your heels, hips above the knees, shoulders back, camel pose. We'll be here for five cycles of breath. Bring your hands to your hips, roll yourself up, take the block. Put it in between your heels and take a seat. A few breaths just to neutralize the spine. Then come forward, set the block to the side, and also move the blanket off your mat. And we're gonna come to laying onto our back. When I do spinal twists, I like to take a block in between my thighs. It just kind of helps keep my pelvis in a neutral shape, similar to a, when we sleep with a pillow in between the legs, for example. So spinal twist, knees towards the left elbow or right elbow, it doesn't matter. Just look over the opposite shoulder. to the middle. We're going to do the other side. Knees to the opposite elbow and look over the other shoulder. as well. And then come back to the middle, stretch your legs long in front of you, Shavasana, resting pose. I like to take a blanket and put it underneath the back of my head, just going to give me a little bit of support 
you can do that or you can just lay it flat onto the ground. We often hear that Shavasana is the most important pose of practice. The reasons are many, but one of the primary reasons is during Shavasana. That's when we assimilate the knowledge that we gathered from our practice into intelligence. And I don't mean intellectual intelligence, especially that today I perhaps shared a little bit more of anatomy or, or focus more on alignment than I did in the past couple of weeks. But intelligence in the body, feeling our body, the edges of it, that in itself is intelligence and that we assimilate that in Shavasana. So allow yourself to just be heavy, to rest, to truly rest, and trust that whatever you need, you will retain, and whatever you don't retain and hold on simply means you don't need it. recommend staying in Shavasana for as long as you can. Give yourself at least a good five minutes here. Thank you all for joining me, for practicing with me this morning. I will be back here again next Monday morning, 8 a.m. Eastern Time. In the meantime, if you have any questions, comments, suggestions, anything you'd like to share, you can share it with me either on Instagram or Facebook. My Instagram handle is at Yogi Soli, Y-O-G-I-S-O-L-I, -I, Yogi Soli. I'm also, you can also find me on Facebook at Yogi Soli. Thank you, thank you. Have a wonderful day. And I always love to end my practices with a very simple prayer that says, may our practices guide us towards courageous actions, deeper community, and the love of all beings. Namaste. Namaste, yogis. Thank you again. I am going to hang out here a couple of minutes. Um, in case anyone wants to have any questions, again, Yogi Soli on Instagram and um, as well at Facebook. Actually, I'm going to sign off. Bye-bye. Thank you.